you know, I have seen a bit of a turnaround in productions. It seems like uh, applications are up a little bit. Uh, it seems like um, uh, people interacting with their database a little bit, you know, with rates taking a slight uh tick down what what do you what have you been seeing i know you you uh you have this large group of like the uber top producers in the nation what what, what are you guys seeing we're seeing a, a a lot of people having some of their best months they've had in a couple of years not everybody but a lot of them I, yeah. i'd say the majority are having much better months and um i i put it to kind of three reasons one you know with our group we showed them how to do get into the break into the builder business. I have several who picked up some good builders, um, but mainly on the people that are using the NAR settlement to get out and get in front of a lot of agents and why agents need good loan officers right now and how they can be the backup. I've had several people like uh, Jack Thompson, you know, he has several branches out there in New Mexico and uh, the States around it. And he, he's, talked to like 600 agents within a matter of like four or five weeks. Um, and it's really getting a lot of traction. And then those doing the calls, you and I talk about that, why, why we coach on the call reluctance, man, those people are doing it. Oh, the other thing that's happened, that little bit of drop in rates is starting to spur refinance because, you know, mentally a lot of loan officers, myself included, could go there. And we think about, well, rates have only dropped this much. But when you add on, values have gone up. Some might be able to lose MI. Taxes have increased. A lot of homeowners associations have greatly increased their rates. People's payments have increased. So if we can get even just got their payments down a little bit, mm -hmm. it's making a big difference. So we're uh, one of one of our folks ran a special on refinances, and he picked up five million dollars in production last month. Wow! It, it, hey, and every extra five million dollars in production helps. You know, that's that's what I'm told. Dude, dude you talk you talk, you, you talk about, and I want to I want to dive a little deeper in a couple of these. But you know, you talk about uh, homeowners association going up. So uh, my youngest daughter Alexis has a. Uh, beachfront condo in Myrtle Beach. She was living there for a little while. She since moved to High Point and she kept that. We're going to keep it as kind of a family okay. beach place. I think you and I and Janice and Maria are going to go there here sometime cool. this this fall or something. Anyway, so when she bought that thing about three years ago, her homeowners was, I think, like 600. Dude, this is no exaggeration. It's gone from somewhere around 600 a month to 1,800 a month. 1800 a month isn't that crazy yeah because a lot of these a lot of these condo associations what's happened after that fall you know what where was it fort lauderdale miami that one yeah. fannie mae has really tightened down the right they're all having to be reinspected and then the insurance companies that insure them have jacked, rocketed yeah jacked it way up absolutely so so you mentioned uh a, a handful of things here so uh builder business uh, speaking about NAR settlement, which is really and calls the drop in rate. I mean, really, all this has to do with prospecting. You know, it's just increasing prospecting time. What would you What would you say? What would you say is the optimal time of actual prospecting? I'm not talking about like getting ready to and preparing and let me do my homework first. Like actual real talking to somebody whether it's face to face phone like however how many hours a day uh you know a monday you know work day would you say uh, on your the the average successful loan officer is prospecting two to three hours and and i think that's what we coach them uh, we we coach them two hours monday through thursday i got yeah. from you right yeah the, the, the thor's hammer and in the yeah. su success plan the dsp but what we tell them is, regardless of what you do, talk to 13 people a day, four days a week. If not, make sure, even if you work a few extra days, get to 50 a week. That's what our serve. The, the successful ones have at least 50 great conversations in a week. And they'll have typically, whether it's on Zoom, even better if it's person to person, a, a fa one face to face, and then 
they follow up. And that the other big deal, this one's the really the bigger one with Come prospecting. Um, the follow up, a lot of people make that initial call. 66% of loan officers stop calling the agent or the consumer after the second call. But 80% of the sales are made at the fifth call and beyond. I, I was talking to one of our coaching clients the other day, and he had been make, starting his calls. Dave said, man, I've been at this. And we kind of counted up the weeks. He said, I'm not getting much. And it was about five to six weeks in. I said, hang in there a couple more weeks. He called me pretty excited a couple weeks later. And he said, oh, my God, it like the floodgates opened. I think I think his numbers were don't hold me to this, but I'll be close. It was like I got 13 leads and two contracts and then last week. And now I have over 15 leads this week and three contracts. So not only is it, I think, talking to the 13 people, but a lot of people go. And this was a big fear in the survey and our call reluctance course. I don't think I'm adding value. I, I don't want to be a bother. So they stop making that mm. call. And the truth is. It's like you and me, the, the more I talk to you, the more of a friend you became, the easier it gets to talk to you. Yeah. So, so do you, so, so like in his case, it, it it's not that in the beginning, what he was doing was wrong. You just have to do it for a certain period of time where they go, all right, this guy is, per or this lady is persistent and they'll be persistent following up on my leads too. And that's exactly what I want. So you think it's just Absolutely. a, it's just a, and what amount of time, like, like if I'm calling somebody on a weekly basis, uh, looking to get business from them is, do you find like a, like when it starts, I, I get it. Sometimes it happens on week one, but where, like, where was he at in the process? How many weeks was he in when he saw that bump? Week seven. Yeah. That's, that's about what we find too. You know, yeah. I always tell my average, my average coffee meeting took me 5.7 calls. Yeah. And I don't remember the exact number, but it's right. It's almost the same. That there was like another, you know, well, six you're just shorter, you're better looking, him or well, that, that I do have an unfair advantage. Yeah. These good looks, <laughs> they uh, they move me to the front of the line, you know. There you go. Uh, but yeah. sincerely, it it's that. But we let our heads get into it. It's really amazing what, and and you and I are going to have another discussion on this. This survey of our people in the call reluctance course, that it's you can give them the scripts. And this, we know the scripts work, and we know from hundreds of people that making the calls work. But man, we we sure it's that I, I I've got a, a new equation is success isn't just persistence of calls; it's success is persistence less resistance. You got to overcome that call reluctance to keep doing it. What What do you think? So you said the the average top producing uh, loan officer. Uh, slash branch manager is pro prospecting a couple hours a day. So we go, all right, so there's eight hours in the standard work day, right? And so I'd have two hours of prospecting and six full hours of everything else. Absolutely. What do you think it is that holds? So when I ask, when I go around the country speaking, um, which by the way, I'm, I'm going to the, uh, the Arkansas uh mortgage brokers association uh just invited me uh to come out and uh i freaking love arkansas man it's arkansas just is like, a growing market too because it's affordable and a lot yeah. of the beauty of it and there's some big companies arkansas is amazing area. if you've never been to that was my 50th state by the way it was last, the last time i, I was went. in arkansas i was there with you and we stayed at the uh that state house hotel right next to the state house right and it had had the yes house. yes I, I love Arkansas. Anyway, cool. so when I go around uh, to these associations, I'm going to the Virginia one too, by the way, like three days later at Virginia Beach. So, uh, so that's where my campfire story was, just as an FYI. Really? We don't have time to get into that. But anyway, so I get on these bunny trails, you know. So um, so when I go around the uh, around the nation speaking at these associations, when they're kind enough to invite me to the associations, and I ask the question of how many of you uh, spend how many hours a day do you spend real prospecting? Like, what's the number one thing that you do that makes you most your money? And most of them, you know, market my database, referral partner marketing, whatever. And I go, all right, how many hours, minutes, if any, did you do that last week? The average answer is zero. 
So now we just we just said, and we find the same thing over here, Kevin, that two hours a day makes a top producer, like not just a a getting by producer, but a well into the six figures is what we've seen producer, somebody that that prospects two hours a day. Now, we've given this message to tens of thousands of loan officers across the nation, yet it's a small handful that will run with it. What do you think it is that holds most of them back? Call reluctance. Yeah. Again, okay. And again, it's all those fears in the head of fear, yeah. failure, lack of confidence. I, but they let that head. I, I, I want to tell you two success stories from last week. This is real good. People in our call reluctance. Marty, she's one of our folks in the in the group, and she's been through the boot camp. She knew the scripts. And but man, the calls were just hard. And this is how I think there, there's that few people like Steve Kyle's like this 95%. He's in that top 5%. He doesn't have the call reluctance, right? Steve's so confident. And but but the majority of people, let's say 90% at least, have this. And so she, and she's a good loan officer. She's been doing this a long time. She knows her stuff. And so we we got got on a call and I said, Well, what's making it so hard? Yeah, well, this is happening. I said, no, no, no. But those those are kind of excuses. What's really what tell me what's going through your head? Well, I picture a group of these agents and they're over near in the corner and they're talking about me. She doesn't know what she's doing. Her mm -hmm. she's a correspondent, not a broker. Her rates are too high. She's not very good. She she doesn't know her guidelines. I mean, so imagine being a, an athlete or a musician and having that kind of crap go through your head. How would you perform? You wouldn't. So we ran her through some exercises uh, that we teach in the call reluctance. I mean, in 30 minutes, what was funny, I got her to this level. She 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 got where the resistance was like at an eight or nine. Had her do these couple exercises. It dropped to a three. She texted me the next day and she goes, Kevin. I just made twice as many calls as I ever have. And, mm. and I got seven contacts and I got three leads. But you got to get rid of that noise in your head. And your, your brain's trying to protect you. That's what it's designed to do. And then there's another guy, uh, Tom, and he was I'd saying, tell me about it. Well, I checked my email. I better go check the internet. I, I, their excuses. What are you thinking well, I don't want to be a bother to them. You know, I'm, I don't have any value to add. You know, oh, they're thinking, here he's calling me again. So we went through kind of similar exercises. He goes, oh, my gosh. This is, and, and, and this week he's he's off and running with it. And he'll, he'll do pretty good. But we got to get people to get out of their own heads. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, one thing that we find is once somebody actually takes the action and starts doing it, they find out, what was I so afraid of? You know, oh, absolutely. I, dude, dude, I remember, uh, and I know we're at the top of the hour here. Uh, I remember um, uh, when I was a young kid, I was I don't know, like six years old, and they had this high diving board at the at the local swimming pool. I don't know, it was probably six feet up, maybe something like that, as opposed to the two foot, you know, kind of thing. And I remember as a, a, a little kid, I was probably like six or five or something like that. I would sit there and look down at that six foot. And I go, oh, my gosh, it's so high. And I was so afraid. And I was so afraid. And I'd go up there for like a week, you know, every day and go stand and then walk back down the stairs, go stand and walk back down the stairs. And when I finally did, it was like, well, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, you know, exactly. That wasn't so bad, you know, and 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 uh, the second and third time, it was just so much easier. It's just it's just taking that first step and getting past it. So anyway. Good yeah. stuff, man. Hey, I'm speaking uh, with uh, Kevin Gillespie. Uh, Kev Kevin uh, leads uh, uh, a group of uh, of top producing uh, branch managers, company owners, and loan officers. Um, if you want to see more, hear more about what and uh, uh, what Kevin does, he's got a builder boot camp, uh, crushingcallreluctance.com. Uh, so various things. Is, is that where I'd send to crushingcallreluctance.com? Is that uh, the if they want to find out that that they'd have to pay for the course here? Right? To find out more information, go to www.profitdrivenplan.com. Profitdrivenplan.com. Yes, Perfect. Sir. Go to profitdrivenplan.com. That'll be a very, very, very good use of your time. I love you, man. I appreciate everything you do for me. You make appreciate me a better you, me. And th thanks for being who you are. I'll see you, buddy. Hey, thank you. See you later. Right. Bye. Bye.